Thank you all. And um, I understand there may be people for whom this is their first glycobiology conference. Um, I was in your shoes 40 years ago, and I can tell you this is a wonderful field, so please stay. Don't be tempted by these epigenetics I'm going to show you. Stay in glycobiology because it's one of the most friendly uh, and arm-opening fields I know about. And, th and it turns out that that's rarer than, than we'd like. So, um, so I'm going to begin this talk, and if I can figure out which one is the pointer, I'm not sure which uh, button is the pointer, I may end up, uh, perfect, um, by drawing an analogy from cosmology. Um, this is an artist's conception of what is known um, by cos as dark matter. And the topic I'm going to be talking about in glycobiology was glycobiology's dark matter for almost 60 years. It was influencing signaling and other factors, but we had no way, easy way of detecting it. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how it was detected and why it's important to define um, how it may play a role in human biology. So um, like any mystery, um, there are detectives, and the detectives that I'm going to highlight are those from my own group. There's a wonderful field that, that uh, has risen up around glycobiology, um, and uh, the work I'm going to be talking about was carried out uh, in, in my group, uh, and Michelle Bond, who's uh, here at the conference and asked the last question, uh, is here if, if I leave any question unanswered, and she'll be at poster 31. Uh, a whole group of collaborators that have been very useful, including the late Gilbert Ashwell, who many of you remember was the discovery of mammalian lectins. So I normally do show that surface glycan, but not for this talk. Uh, and then a whole group of talented postdocs, two of which are uh, presenting posters. Uh, Stephanie Olivier uh, von Steffelen is here. So um, our team, our running team, which is running this week, is called the O-Runnax. Um, and I, I, and we we'll hope they'll win. Uh, we're not there to cheer them on. Okay, so um, this mysterious world I'm going to be talking about derives from the hexosamine pathway that Gordon alluded to briefly uh, earlier in the day. Um, there is a uh, competition between UDP and acid glucosa, glucosamine generated via this pathway and other glycosylation pathways. So I don't want you to think of this as a separate arena from normal N and O glycosylation. It is part and parcel of the glycobiology machinery. However, the, its targets define a very specific set of biologically relevant targets. And I'm going to talk about the reason that specificity is of great importance. So I'm going to tell you about ogluknec and signaling, the enzymes of ogluknec cycling, a little bit about using genetics to solve this problem, and uh, finally, a hint of what this may be doing biologically. So, like any good mystery, there are some unsolved mysteries. I hope everyone in this room will get a chance to see the answer to these questions. I probably will not. Um, but how can only two enzymes mediate at all of ogluknec metabolism? What provides the specificity? What is the relationship between this modification and other significant post-translational modifications? Why is ogluknec essential in some organisms and perhaps not in others? Is ogluknec metabolism a driver of human disease? And I'll provide evidence that is indeed the case. And finally, is ogluknec important for transgenerational inheritance through epigenetic uh, phenomena? Okay, so um, to put it in context, uh, ogluknec um, is not the only form of cytoplasmic glycosylation. I often even find glycobiologists who tell me that. It's the only one that happens in the cytoplasm. Well, actually, when I was with Bill and Ars studying the in-link assembly pathway, we found that the early steps in in-link glycosylation are, in fact, cytoplasmic. They occur on the cytoplasmic surface of the ER. And we detected that modification using an enzyme, glaxyl transferase, which serendipitously led Jerry Hart and I and his uh, student, uh, uh, Carmen Torres Rosa, to discover this ogluknec modification using the same enzymatic tool. We now know that you can detect this modification using either the original glexyl transferase trick, you can enrich with wheat germ agglutinin, uh, you can anti, anti ogluknec antibodies have been developed in many laboratories, you can use biorthogonal chemistry, and I'll show you a bit of that.